It's okay to be nervous when you're on camera. You just have to relax. All you have to do is just sit there. Welcome back to the channel, Dan members. Today we are going to be talking about a fan requested mod to the NVG30. In that original review video, we talked about how the NVG30 is powered off of a single 18650 rechargeable lithium battery. And while the battery is removable from the headset itself, making it very easy to swap out batteries once they die, there have been questions on if you can power this device externally, especially since there is a USB-C port here that you can charge the battery through the device. So in today's video, we are going to explore the posited question of how easy and how practical it is to expand the battery capacity of the MVG30 with an external DIY battery pack setup. Stay tuned. Now before I get any further into this little DIY project, if this is your first time visiting the Phantom Lama's Den, welcome to the channel. You should definitely go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you're a returning viewer, if you're a Den member, welcome back. I am so glad that we haven't scared you off yet. Along with all of our firearm content, we do have a bit of a side focus on night vision technology, digital night vision technology. We've been working a lot with goodnightgearshop.com on products that can be nicely paired with the NVG30. Though this video is not a specific showcase or review of anything that Goodnight Gear sells, I do want to encourage you to check out goodnightgearshop.com and if you use promo code PLD10 at checkout, you will save 10% off your entire purchase site-wide. All right, with that out of the Way, let's get into the meat and potatoes of today's video. You may be wondering what the added benefit to moving the battery out of the NVG30 housing itself into an external power source would be, other than being able to potentially add to the overall battery capacity. Well, firstly, the added battery capacity is a huge benefit. The NVG30 is rated for up to five hours of battery life. However, that's only if you're not using the built-in illuminator and you have all the settings turned down to the dimmest. If you're using the NVG30 at its full power, you're cutting that battery life down significantly. So yes, even just doubling the battery life of the NVG30 by being able to have an external power source is a huge boon. An additional benefit is in relation to something I discussed in my original review, as well as when I was doing a video talking about this setup and running the NVG30 in a binocular configuration and that is the added weight on the front of a helmet. If you are running a helmet with this setup, let alone a binocular configuration, and you're going to be wearing that for quite a while, you are going to start noticing your head is being weighed down fairly considerably in the front. And it's at that point that you are looking to counterbalance the weight that you have added to the front of the helmet with something on the back. Now you could easily just throw some weights into a pouch on the back of your helmet, but why not instead of just having dead weight on the back of the helmet, make that functional weight. So the goal I set out to achieve was to find a way to externally mount batteries to run this NVG30 and have them mounted in this rear helmet pouch. The first step in setting up an external battery source for the NVG30 was to just do a proof of concept to see if the device could be powered off of a battery or power source outside of the device. For that, I just used one of my very cheap battery banks, spoiler alert, it works. With that proof of concept out of the way, I went to Amazon to look for some sort of battery bank array that could hold multiple 18650 batteries. And this is what I found, a two slot DIY more battery holder, battery bank battery array for two 18650 batteries. And before I forget, I'm gonna have a link down in the description and pin comment for this battery holder, just to save you some time when you're searching. I will say that they have a four slot battery holder, but we'll get into why I went with the two slot instead here in a little bit. I actually never addressed it when I was recording. It's just too big. It wouldn't fit properly into the pouch in the back of the helmet. 
So with my new battery holder, I connected the USB-A to USB-C to the NVG30 and turning on my DIY battery pack, we'll get some red lights there, you should see that power on. And that simply, we have built an external battery source for the NVG30. You would think that all you have to do then is just mount the NVG30 back onto the dovetail mount, turn the battery pack on, put the battery pack into the pouch on the back of the helmet, and you are good to go, right? Well, you certainly could, but I wouldn't advise that. And it's at this point you should start noticing some things, and I want to address those individual issues that I have already found with this setup. First and easiest to address, the threading of the USB cord through the webbing on your helmet there. The next visible issue that presents itself is there are now visible lights that are present on your helmet. There is a solid blue light with a flashing red light within the NVG30 itself, but far more obvious, you have a string of red LEDs on the battery pack itself. In the interest of not distracting myself, I'm gonna turn those off. If you are running an NVG30 on a helmet for whatever reason, you are probably trying to remain as invisible as possible. And having light come off the back of your helmet and a little bit of light coming off of your night vision device, that is not going to help you maintain a level of stealth. Both sets of lights can be addressed very simply. Black electrical tape. Just cover up the LEDs with a strip of black tape and stuff some black tape down into where the light is on the NVG30. For all intents and purposes, problem solved. The next area of concern is for the battery pack itself. While this device does work and it has plenty of good reviews, I personally take exception of stuffing a bare circuit board into a pouch that is going to live on the back of your helmet. In this form, it is in no way going to be able to withstand abuse and being shaken and beaten around in the back of a helmet. You are more than welcome to throw this pack in the back of the helmet pouch. However, you have to understand that you are running the risk of damaging it. And depending on the level of abuse, it will eventually be rendered inoperable. Now, in my mind, there are two solutions to this. The first is more crafty, more engineering based. The other solution is more of a, eh, it, it works and it seems to get the job done, so let's go with it. Over the last several weeks, I have been prototyping 3D printed backings and closures for this battery pack. And while I have come up with some that are more successful, such as this one at protecting the back face, I really wanted to make something that was more of an enclosure for the entire unit. The problem I was running into was that once I had a successful enclosure for the battery holder itself, it no longer fit into the pouch. And that's why I ultimately went with a simple platform to sit on the back and I would have to tap the 3D print and have bolts that hold the circuit board onto the platform. This way, at the very minimum, I'm going to be able to protect the back of the circuit board, protect the pins, and protect the components on the back of the board from getting damaged by the fabric of this pouch. But that's still not going to solve the issues of what happens if you have this out in the rain or if it gets a little wet. And that's when I came up with using waterproof spray on the circuits before mounting this to a platform. Again, I have a link down in the description to what I used, but I did a light coating on the back of the circuit board. And this is where I wanna emphasize you have to be careful with overspray because the waterproofing spray will prevent conductivity. So you're gonna wanna keep the spray off of the battery contacts. You don't want the spray to get into the USB port that you're going to be using to power the NVG30. The second solution, as I said, is very simple. Get yourself some plastic baggies, throw this in that plastic baggie and use a rubber band to close off around the USB port. Toss the baggied battery pack into the pouch and call it good, simple and practical. My last issue with running an external battery source for the NVG30 is really my biggest concern with running a battery pack. Having an enclosed battery within the NVG30 device 
makes this both a very convenient, but also a very closed system. I have very little concern of what are getting into this device's system because the NVG30 is already inherently very water resistant. In order to run an external battery system, you have to remove the rubber seal, which protects the USB-C port, the micro SD card, and the hard reset button. This creates a big point of vulnerability within the NVG30. Throw into the mix now a USB cable. While most USB cables don't seem to have problems and can last for years without issue, you never know when it's going to give up the ghost. Furthermore, because you're connecting the NVG30 to the batteries now via cable, something could happen that disconnects the cable from the NVG30, which will then render you blind. Lastly, you are now relying on a home-built battery pack. And again, while I have had zero issues with this battery holder myself, that doesn't mean that they're all going to work flawlessly. It doesn't mean that one of these will not experience a catastrophic failure. With all the added complexity to this system, instead of having everything built into just the NVG30, you have to wonder if the complexity is worth having the convenience of multiple batteries or a little bit better counterbalance. I personally really like the idea of running a battery pack on the back of my helmet for the reasons I pointed out at the very beginning of this video. However, that has to be tempered with the knowledge of the added points of failure to a more complex system. In no way do I want to discourage you from trying this setup out because it does work. It works quite well. I have noticed zero drop in performance of the NVG30 when running off an external power source versus the single battery that's built into the NVG30. However, I do want you to be aware of the added risks of making a all-in-one system more complicated. This whole project has been really interesting to me. Over the next several night vision videos that we're testing out other equipment, I'm going to be running the external battery system just to be testing it out. I'll check back in with you in a couple months on how this circuit board is holding up, both with the spray and any elements it's exposed to, how durable it's been, I hope that this holds up really well, but again, it's something you have to take with a grain of salt. It is a very exposed circuit board. I want to give a big thank you to the DEN member that reached out directly to me with this idea. It's been a lot of fun and it's going to continue being an experiment to see the true viability, the true feasibility of this external battery system. Let me know down in the comment section what you think of this idea. If you have ideas on how to improve this, let me know. I'm all ears. Truly, thank you for the ideas and thank you for all your support. We are coming up on our end of year goal of 4,000 subscribers and it's only the end of June at this point. You all have been amazing and we cannot wait to show you what we have in the months to come. That's gonna do it for this video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the Phantom Llamas Den. Go check us out on X, Instagram, phantomllamasden.com. Follow us over on Twitch where we get really out of hand on the weekend. As always, don't take life too seriously and make it a great day.